Hello, hello. All right. Well, I guess anybody missed it. They're trying to make a big push to make Atlanta the center for mobility. Got it? <laughs> I think everybody's been saying that multiple times, the video before every presentation. So thanks for coming, all seven or eight of you. Um, <clears throat> the idea today is to um, walk a little bit, of, um, a little bit through uh, what we can do with Wi-Fi networks. And uh, we have uh, a quick demo going on uh, next door on one of the tabletops that I would recommend that you go take a look at after, after the session if you, if you want. I'm um, going to talk a little bit about what's happening from a statistical perspective, what we're seeing in traffic growth and whatnot, um, what we published through the Cisco VNI, uh, Virtual Networking Index, um, that has become kind of as the, pretty much the reference for the industry. Then talk a little bit about the technologies that uh, we have to enable location-based services and applications, and then talk a little bit of a couple of examples, so how they're being put to use in different uh, locations worldwide. <clears throat> the first thing uh, we're seeing is clearly is a convergence of cellular and, and Wi-Fi networks uh, to create a mobile experience like no other before, mobile internet, of course. That includes both voice and data, and location becomes a, cre a key component for it. And to enable all that, of course, we have things like uh, analytics and uh, big data and, um, uh, processing behind the scenes um, and, of course, lo location-based services. So it's a major change coming up. Um, these are a couple, of, probably three or four slides that show what we are up against. Um, between 2012 and 2017, Ian Ruff de la Vega was talking about this at lunch, um, it's expected that mobile data will grow 13 times. Now, if you, before we go to that one, if we think about it, 13x, and we look at the technologies that are available for mobility today, whether we start at 2G or 3G and we jump to LTE advanced and we give the fastest throughput we can, there's no way we can cope with the 13X growth. So things need to change beyond just the technology that powers our cell phone. The architecture of the network will need to change. We're gonna have to go from major macro cells that are serving thousands of customers to a large number of smaller cells with fewer customers per cell to reuse the spectrum as much as possible and then also take advantage of the large amount of spectrum that is available for Wi-Fi and somehow stitch the two together
to create a virtual enhancement of the, of the spectrum that's available for mobility. 67% is expected to be video. Now, video is the most difficult type of content to broadcast or to transmit. I mean, packet loss and jitter and delays, all that impacts the quality of the video, and it's all about the experience for the consumer. So the, not only the architecture needs to change, the quality of the networks needs to be very high because otherwise consumers will, will really notice it and in, in not be satisfied, of course. Um, it's expected that mobile data will grow three times as fast as, um, as wire uh, data. 80% uh, of the users uh, are consuming this while they are in the presence of a Wi-Fi network. 80% of the time, they could be latching on to a Wi-Fi network and not be taxing the macro. Each user is expected to generate one gigabyte of traffic per month up from 63 megabytes today. So think about it. When we say, well, one gig, I may, may be getting two gigs. So we're used to this kind of numbers. Well, but we are typically the exception. Everybody that is here does not represent the real population, right? This is normalized worldwide across all geographies. So we think it could be somebody in India, somebody in Peru, Argentina, Europe, whatever it may be, average is going to go to one gigabyte per month. The, the traffic is expected that by 2017, smartphones and tablets will drive 21% of the traffic. So it's a 23% um, average, um, CAGR, uh, composite average growth rate. In terms of uh, content, 29% of the video will go through cell phones and tablets. Once again, the experience with the cell phone is more private, and more often than not, unless, let, let's face it, what do we use the cell phone for? We use it to talk when we're on the go. We use it to consume video when we're stationary somewhere. So it's a nomadic type of experience. Could be in the office, could be in Starbucks, could be at home. There's definitely Wi-Fi there. So 29% of the video content going through those devices, 100% of that 29% could be going through Wi-Fi. Um, <clears throat> by access technology, 45% uh, of all the IP traffic would be through Wi-Fi by 2017. So when you look at all these statistics, again, there's a massive transformation happening in the mobility industry, and it's not just about license spectrum. It's not about 2G to 3G to 4G to whatever may come next. It's how do we solve the business problem that carriers have worldwide. And that business problem is coverage and capacity. Right now, we're facing a capacity crunch where all the networks in major metros are down on their knees. Now, if I go back to the first slide, remember the 13, 13 times traffic uh, issue? That is, again, normalized worldwide. I was talking with an operator in, uh, in, in England, in, in London. Their projection is 50 times by 2017. So once again, technology alone cannot do it. I mean, li licensed technology alone cannot do it. Wi-Fi needs to come in. The architectural transformation of the network is a must. <clears throat> so convergence, convergence of networking and big data. Um, this is just showing the problem. This, uh, I mean, these are the companies that the CIO and the IT uh, groups are involved with. And this is on the business side and how everything, once again, uh, is converging on a mobility platform. There are a couple companies that are represented today. Um, Catavolt is one of them. Star Mobile is another one where they're bringing the enterprise experience uh, CRM or, or <coughs> let's, let's let it build out. Uh, business intelligence, composite apps, ERP, CRM, all that bringing together and attaching it to a mobile experience so we can access the tools that reside in the service inside the enterprise from whatever we may be, do it on the go. Clearly, there are some segments that are uh, leading the, the transition to mobile. You can see them, I mean, it's intuitive, right? In retail, in hospitality, travel, um, uh, health, and education, where everybody, I mean, if you go to any pretty much high school and college today, they consume everything through their iPhone, <clears throat> iPad, and even the, the laptop, unless they're on Wi-Fi, they don't touch it. I mean, it's all a true mobile experience, and that's what they're, what they're used to. Come on. All right, um, just 
a couple names of, uh, of companies that are, that are players in, in the mobile internet. I mean, from Broad Hobbit's company that Cisco acquired, the devices you see, the usual suspects, Qualcomm and Broadcom. Uh, you have companies that probably were not heard of before, whether it's a fung Fungware or uh, Euclid or what, Joingo. So all companies that are coming to address this same problem of how to, um, how to it, it enhance the experience for mobility, in, whether it's for video or for location-based services, or how to tie it all together and make it easy and seamless for, for consumers. Uh, this is a, a summary of uh, what Garner uh, calls the CIO priorities, the top 10 from a business perspective and from a technology perspective. In I'm going to read in case you cannot see from the back. Increasing enterprise growth and delivering operational results, analytics and business intelligence, mobile technologies. If you think about it, they all touch on mobility one way or the other. We talked about earlier today uh, how mobility is revolutionizing all the industries and how like the map industry disappeared essentially through GPS and, and the, the app with the blue dot in our iPhone um, in how, how we can use uh, technologies to address this problem. So clearly top of mind in fo focusing on that, business intelligence and mobility are the big initiatives. What has been completed in the past year and what's expected to be completed, completed within the next year, the top two are uh, mobility and business intelligence and analytics. Once again, they all traverse a, mo a mobile network. They all need a mobile platform. So clearly it's top of mind on the enterprise side. We see it as consumers. We want more, more service, faster throughput, and better quality of the experience, but bring it to an enterprise environment. It's clearly top of mind uh, to, to, to make sure that they can deliver uh, that information across the networks. In terms of uh, consideration for network infrastructure, and th these are kind of big le high level summary, clear uh, convergence of wired and wireless, and I would go on to say Wi Fi and cellular. It's not just wired and wireless, it's regardless of technology, it's technology agnostic. Again, it's not about a technology play, it's about a business problem, coverage and capacity. Uh, and network and business analytics. Now, we're going to see later on a couple of examples, once again, using Wi-Fi as a platform uh, for, for, for analytics. Of course, when we get into this space, we have to worry about the bring your own device and everybody, like Jennifer today, won a, an LG G2 all of a sudden. If Cisco didn't have one in the network, this one now. So I need to make sure that, that can be supported. Uh, <clears throat> Come on. Click, click, click. Um, there's issues with uh, security, and we're t we talked about uh, earlier today, AirWatch was talking about all the things that they do to make sure the security is embedded in the network, uh, how to support new devices and the type of, uh, of model. But all, all this is pointing in the direction that not only do I have technology challenges on the network, lack of spectrum or whatnot, but there's, a, there's an, an explosive growth on the number of devices that are coming up in the, in the network every day and I need to make sure that my network is compatible. So this is pointing us in the direction that we absolutely need to follow open standards, create them whether or not, and in, in use everyone that, that is available to make sure that we can create a unified experience, whether it's running on an iOS uh, device, Android, or Blackberry if they make it, um, or any other device that may, may be out there. Looking at uh, B2C, again, from companies like Cisco, we're used to doing a lot of B2B. We work with the service providers and with the enterprise. It's a transaction that we understand. Well, we need to make sure that we can support their challenges, which is the B2C um, relationship. Services that are required, type of partnerships that may be required. We may need to work with a clearinghouse somewhere in Europe to bring all the traffic through uh, for mobile payments and whatnot. Uh, some things may be, may be um, require on our routers. Some things may be uh, third party that ride on, on our network. And of course, um, outsourcing is a key component. This one, it's, it's probably more data than, than, I don't know if you care for, but that I care for. This is showing the average accuracy in meters, uh, how it gets better over time with the different um, uh, uh, technologies. And Wi-Fi fingerprinting is getting a lot better, uh, getting all the way to magnetic and, and um, that is, I mean, network-based or client-based. But the good thing is we're right around here. Uh, we can use a lot of, um, of the existing technologies to give a very accurate location, not of the person, 
but of the device. In keeping the identity of the individual separate from the device, so we don't, we are clear of all the uh, privacy issues and invasion of privacy and whatnot. Um, so the examples I'm going to talk about are focusing on this guy, and now we know if, I mean, if it's mine, more than likely it's in my pocket, so they can uh, locate me. But the, the location is pretty good. Uh, we were um, installing the Wi-Fi network at the AT&T Foundry, a couple of blocks down the road. And uh, of course, we had the benefit of starting with pretty much a clean space, and we deployed the access points where we wanted them. We got the location down to five meters. So if you think about it, five meters may still seem a lot. I'm, so, I'm sorry, five feet. Five feet, not five meters. Five feet. So still may be a lot, but when you're traversing, uh, walking through a mall or on the street, I mean, that's awesome. If I can tell if you're, I mean, I may not be able to tell if you're exactly in front of a Banana Republic or a uh, Ann Taylor, but I know that you are in that area and not in Nordstrom. So I can push uh, content aware or location aware uh, ads based on where you are in the mall very, very precisely. So what we've been working on for a long time already is how to make Wi-Fi behave the same way as uh, the licensed um, networks do. Make it, because the, what, what is the biggest problem that we have? And I, I suffered this today, and I'm not going to pick on anybody, but I go to Starbucks, right? I pull up my iPad, I get an email with a link, I click on the link, first thing that comes up is the splash screen from Starbucks to accept to connect. Before it was a two click, right? So I had to say okay, and then connect. Next thing that happens, takes me to their video. Sorry, I don't care about the video, I want the content that I was going for. So that authentication process turns me off. So you know what I do? Shut down Wi-Fi. I go on the, on the macro, I have unlimited uh, data plan on my phone, so forget about Wi-Fi. Well, I shouldn't, right? It should be a lot easier. The phone should automatically detect that there's a network in place that I can authenticate against, and without requiring any input from me, automatically get me, get me on that network and go on. Interestingly enough, it does happen with the iPhone, but not with the iPad. But if I could have that, I would be a happy camper. Well, we, we spent a lot of time doing that, um, <clears throat> putting, putting that infrastructure or, or that, those features in the access points uh, in, to take advantage, I mean, it was called 802.11u, that is foundation for hotspot 2.0 or, or passpoint, to be able to authenticate without any user intervention and then provide the same roaming uh, capabilities that you have in the traditional mobile networks to go from Wi-Fi network one to Wi-Fi network two, or from Wi-Fi network one to a 3G or 4G. So traverse the different layers of the network or the different networks that may be sitting side by side, totally seamlessly for the consumer. And of course, I mean, the, the punchline, reliable, secure, seamless, and profitable. Of course, you need to do it uh, without having to spend a fortune making it happen. So the mobile experience, they clearly have uh, three components, detect, connect, and engage. So the, the one I was talking about, the, the uh, Starbucks experience, is the, the connect. I mean, make it easy, make it seamless, make it automatic. But first is the detection. Today, if I walk into this room with my Wi-Fi radio turned on, even if I'm not associating to a network, the network can read me and can pinpoint where I am. I can, follow, I can do analytics on my behavior. Again, not Diego, my phone. Um, and once they detect it, can track it, I'm connected, then I can start getting location-based or location-aware uh, advertising or messages that then in engage me with the phone and the location I may be in. Some of this is what we have um, running today at the um, Fernback Museum uh, here in Atlanta, where if you, if you walk, you download an app, um, and you walk through the facility, you can be looking at a fossil, whatever it may be, and you can get information and, and make interaction with the application and get more data what you're looking at. That type of experience is what we see and we're just in the early stages and it's gonna come in space over time. So now talking a little bit about uh, a couple of examples. Um, these are real life examples. Uh, they are deployed in production networks. Um, MGM Resorts in, um, in, in Vegas, actually the Bellagio in Vegas, which is part of MGM, um, it's personal guest experience, lo indoor location services. So, I mean, what we call the indoor blue dot. I mean, we're used to seeing the blue dot on a map when using the GPS. Well, brought into an indoor location. 
um, and location analytics. <coughs> this is a real life example. This is happening in, in uh, Copenhagen at, at the airport. And the story behind this is the Copenhagen airport, airport has outsourced the management of security and, and all the personnel that is on the, at the airport. And the service level agreement says that they need to have people through security in 30 minutes or less. Well, how do you measure that? Well, easy. Track the cell phones. If you can pinpoint people as they come into the terminal, number one, you're going to know how many, assuming that they all have the radio, the Wi-Fi radio turned on, but it's a pretty good approximation uh, anyway. You're going to know how many people are showing up, where they're going, and you can track my phone. I'm at the back of the line until I clear security. And if I take more than 30 minutes, the airport finds the, the, um, the provider. So they're using it for that. And they're also using it. I'm going to see a couple of examples. First one is incoming passengers, is what, what I said, for security personnel, gate personnel. Second one is outgoing pas passengers, customs, and also for uh, flights coming in. That would be for customs as well. And traffic, pa traffic patterns, where there's congestion, and how to, how to manage people uh, more effectively. And then dwell time to know where to place advertising. So imagine that I can go to um, a brand. I mean, let's pick on Coke since, since Tom is here. So Tom, we can put a Coke commercial or Coke um, ad on gate one, two, three, or we can put it down here where you have so many people that spend 10 minutes average at this time of the day. Uh, you, can, you can change it if you go. Think of all the possibilities of what you can do. Make sure that your cost Per, per location, it's, it's minimized and the impact is max maximized. So it's using the analytics that you can get from the network, again, without identifying the individual, but knowing that people are there, people are walking or staying there, using that to extract information and then we can apply with business logics. Another one is uh, Miami Children's Hospital. And in this, in this case, um, sorry, going a little bit too fast. Um, they're using uh, to, well, you, you, you can read it through, but it's uh, to know, um, well, it wants to go forward, the emergency room uh, and how long the, the wait time is to manage traffic flow through the airport, make sure that patients are, are taken care of quickly. If they have um, a, um, an infectious outbreak, they can track back who was there, I mean, devices, and, and look for patterns on how things uh, what happened in the, in the hospital. And again, we're still at the early stages of this. This is an example um, that this is actually the, the, demo, the demo that we have uh, next door. And I would recommend, once again, that you, you find the time. It takes five, 10 minutes max uh, to see it in operation. But essentially, it gives you turn-by-turn um, -turn directions inside a mall. Uh, you can say, um, for instance, you walk in, I said, you, you want to find um, store in this case, it was RJM. And it gives you a map on your phone how to get there without having to look for the directory and you are here, where's the star, where's, simplifies it for you. And along the way, we'll identify that, is, that your phone is going through and we'll identify promotions that may be relevant to you. Now, the more data mining and the more intelligence we can create and store legally, the more accurate those commercials or advertising pieces will be. But still, I can walk by whatever, a Levi's uh, store, and there's a promotion going on. I may get something on my phone that says, there's a 15% going on this hour. And if you're right there, then and there, you can take advantage of it walking and buy your, buy your pair of jeans or whatever it may be. But that, that ability to do that on the fly by tracking where you are without being intrusive and be, being careful about the frequency of the hits, because you don't want to get a hit a minute or a second, but uh, be selective in the, uh, it hit you with the, with the right staff at the right location that when you look at your phone, you look up, that's the store. I don't have to find uh, on the other side of the mall. So you can also have a personalized, personalized app that lets you locate not only the store within the mall, but also the products within the store. And um, th this is another example, and again, it, the user interface is a little different in our demo, but once again, I, I ask that you take a, take a look at that. It's a buying experience. I'm buying a sweater. I choose it. I, I say, okay, I want it. I use my, my, my wallet to, uh, to buy it. 
but then it's, it's a virtual ch or physical checkout, but the, but the attendant comes to you as opposed to you going to them. And it automatically tells you, this is similar to what you see in the Apple Store, by the way, but tells you that you're uh, third in line and somebody will be with you within two minutes. And you don't have to wait there. You can continue walking. They will find you. They know where you are. So they track you down and go check you out and, you, and off you go. So it changes the experience of buying in a physical store by using the analytics that you can extract from the mobile network using Wi-Fi as the, as the enabler. More of the same. So I think this is the last slide of the, of the deck, so I can give you some time back. Um, so imagine, well, I'm going to build it up. So the so world economically stronger, smaller, and cleaner. But to me, the important thing is the amount of new experiences that we can create by taking advantage of technology. We are not selling technology for technology's sake. There's, there's been too much of that in the past. Right now, we have business problems and user um, requirements that can be fulfilled with technology. And it's just being creative and intelligent and where to deploy those, those, those technologies to enable the new services. We see a lot of uh, startups coming up here in Atlanta with great applications, and we're just creating the foundation on the platform that they can take advantage of the analytics that can be extracted, changes to policy that may be required on the go, and dynamically, and going back to what Paul Mackey said this morning, dynamically manage the network so it, it can be almost a virtual network running on a bunch of servers and dynamically um, uh, bring resources up and down. So that's what we're, what we're shooting for. It's a long way to go. Uh, there's a lot of technologies that may not exist today. The need is clear. The technology is still in its infancy. But there's a lot of investment that we're making to accelerate those technologies and bring them to market as quickly as possible. So with that, I think that's, yep. Got my email address there if you have any questions, or we can talk, of course, online. If you have any questions now, I'd gladly take any. Yep. Sure. Um, Jen, do you know, uh, the question is, where is Hotspot 2.0 working today? We have a Hotspot 2.0 running in 10 million access points, and since AT&T included, I'm sorry, since Apple included 802.11u in the iPhone iOS 7, is running in 200 million devices today. Hasn't been deployed uh, large scale because it was not a standard, was not widely adopted, but we had a couple trials here and there. It's not massively uh, deployed just yet, but the, the foundation is there. It's just enabling it and take advantage of it. Okay. Any more questions? I'm thinking about Coca-Cola equipment, coolers, mm -hmm. um, vending machines, some of which are in developed markets like the U.S. or Japan. Others may be in you know, sub-Saharan Africa someplace. Do I need to think about this sort of capability differently? Is it just a matter of time or? Not for the operation of the vending machine itself. I think it's more on, I mean, whether you can use the vending machine to read people walking by. For the vending machine, you're going to be connected to a, to, to a fixed network, and I don't think you're going to have a lot of analytics per se on, on that transaction with the network. But you may have the opportunity of somebody walking by and detecting who is going in and how often and, and what not, then you may, but, um, but not for the machine itself. Does that make sense? Sure. Hi, I'm Ashok Kumar. I'm an analyst. Uh, question is, Hotspot 2.0, is that only for service providers? Or is it also something enterprise could deploy? And I got to follow on to that. If that's the case, is there any DMARC going between an enterprise network and a service provider network? Good question. Um, We, it's definitely for managed networks, so whether it's a CIO or for a service provider. Thus far, we've been talking about 
SP Wi-Fi using Hotspot 2.0, which is service provider driven. I'm thinking what, it, what would be the limitation for enterprise to, to use it. I think it would be SP uh, driven, mostly. Okay. Have we considered setting up Hotspot 2.0 at the Foundry? Um, and the reason I ask, Georgia Tech uh -huh. is wanting to pilot it. I believe it's there. On we have, we have the, the location um, services. We talked about the five feet accuracy. I mean, the, the access points that are deployed that definitely support Hotspot 2.0 or Passpoint, as it's called today. Um, I'm not sure we're testing the devices to use it yet, but there's no reason why we couldn't do it. Let's talk. Okay. Again, the, the, the platform is there. The foundation is in place. It's just taking, make, taking advantage of it. Okay. No more questions. So I'll give you 13 minutes back. Thank, thank you. Oh, one more question. We'll get it to you. Thank you.